ओम ज्ञान चमिरंधर से ज्ञानंजुन शलाकाय चक्षुर मिलित दिन तस्मय श्री गुरव नम नम ओं विष्णु पाधाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतल श्रीमती भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिण निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पुश्चातधीशारिण So reading from Bhagavad Gita chapter 17 verses 1 and 2. The chapter is entitled Shraddha Traya Vibhada Yoga. We'll do two verses. I'll read the first. Arjuna inquired, "O Krishna, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of scripture?" but worship according to their own imagination are they in goodness in passion or in ignorance this is a continuation of what krishna was talking about in the previous chapter the 16th chapter if we remember krishna was saying that the demoniac end up living a hellish or experiencing a hellish existence and there are three gates leading to this hellish condition lust anger and greed however the divine the saintly they do not walk through or go through these gates of towards hellish condition of life by engaging in activities that are in relation to or rather in accordance to shastra conjunctions so arjuna is asking the question here what happens to those who do not follow the principles of scripture however they do worship the sanskrit word is yajanti they do worship they do engage in some kind of spiritual activity what happens to them are they in goodness passion or ignorance krishna then uses the rest of this chapter to describe how goodness passion and ignorance actually work so krishna goes a little bit deeper than just the question that arjuna asks here verse number 2 Krishna says According to the modes of nature acquired by the embodied soul one's shraddha faith can be of three kinds in goodness in passion or in ignorance now hear about this now i put shraddha in brackets i've added that remember the title of the chapter is shraddha traya vibhaga yoga krishna goes deeper than just a question which arjuna asks krishna is describing shraddha so the question becomes what is shraddha and that is actually a very very important discussion because often times we misunderstand shraddha shraddha is the first step the first stage in our devotional life so it's very important we understand what shraddha actually means so what is shraddha often time shraddha is defined as faith and that is correct faith is part of what shraddha is absolutely but shraddha is much much more than faith alone a better question to ask is where does faith come from we can have faith in many different things but where is that faith coming from it's coming from experience is coming from even comes from ignorance right we know the term blind faith so faith can come from many different places indoctrination from our culture from our parents faith is the result of something else something comes before faith even though faith is certainly shraddha a part of shraddha shraddha but what really defines shraddha is what comes before faith itself faith is shraddha comes from shraddha shraddha means the word i like to use is programming that's what shraddha is it's our programming we have a particular programming and from that programming faith develops so yes faith and should accurate to say faith is shraddha but it's much more than that it's what our core belief is what is our programming from which our ideas our beliefs our faith come forward that's what's important and that's why krishna then spends the entire chapter describing shraddha programming 
Shraddha Traya Vibhaga Yoga. There are three types goodness, passion, and ignorance. Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. So our programming can be of these three categories. And we know the three modes of material nature, and Krishna is going to spend this entire chapter describing these three modes of material nature. They have certain effects, certain qualities. If our shraddha, if our basic programming is tamasic, everything that comes out of that, there, our expression is going to be tamasic in nature. And we will see in this chapter, our eating habits are tamasic. Our austerity is tamasic. Our worship is tamasic. Our charity, all of our spiritual activities are also tamasic because our shraddha, our programming is tamasic. Now there are various consequences of living according to or in under the influence of tamasic natures. So even though we may be, we believe we are engaged in spiritual activities, if our shraddha, if our programming from which those spiritual activities are manifest is tamasic, then the consequences of those spiritual activities will also be tamasic. That's why it's very important to ensure that our shraddha is sattvic. Now we get to the most interesting part. And it's very important we understand this before we actually get into the study of the 17th chapter. We have to come into the 17th chapter with the right, with the right paradigm. Human beings and all other living species, there is a common denominator. Well, there are four common denominators. Ahaya, Nidra, Maituna, and Bhaya. Ahaya is eating, nourishing itself. Nidra is sleeping, or in some form rejuvenating itself. Maituna is recreating itself, procreation. And Bhaya is self-preservation, defending itself. All living organisms have these four things in common. Ahaya, Nidra, Maituna, and Bhaya. The only thing that distinguishes human beings from every other species of life is we have the ability to transform our programming. That is the only difference. The human being has the capacity to transform and change their programming. We can move our programming from tamasic to sattvic and reap the benefits thereof. That is the most, that is the only difference between human beings and other creatures. Now we get to the point of how. How do we change our program? How do we transform our programming? Now, <laughs> those of you who have been studying Bhagavad Gita with me for several years now, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm going to say, right? Sadhana. I've put two things here. I put sadhana and samskaras. Samskaras, those of you, again, who have been with me for several years now, you know what I'm going to talk. We've talked about samskaras, vasanas, numerous times. Sangskaras is an impression. It's a scar on our subtle body. Experiences, thoughts, desires all create sangskaras on our subtle body. These sangskaras make up our programming. The sangskaras that are impressed upon our subtle body, our mind and intelligence and ego, the sangskaras that are impressed upon that shukshma shriya, that subtle body, that comprises our shraddha, our programming. So when we engage in sadhana, regulated spiritual activities, what are we doing? We are making impressions. We are creating new impressions, deeper impressions, but they are of a spiritual sattvic nature. Those sangskars, those spiritual sangskars that come from sadhana, they transform our shraddha. So our shraddha becomes sattvic, shuddha sattvic, pure goodness even and we reap the benefits thereof. So this is how we transform our Shraddha. And it's very important, Shraddha is the first step in our spiritual development. So we have to work towards transforming our Shraddha to ensure our Shraddha, our programming is not Tamasic. If our programming is Tamasic, 
everything that we do, everything that we, every behavior, every activity, everything about us is tamasic, and we reap the consequences thereof. So we have to ensure the first order of business is transforming our programming from tamasic, from rajasic to sattvic. Then everything that comes from our spiritual activities, everything comes from our spiritual development is sattvic in nature, is shuddha sattvic in nature, and we reap the consequences thereof. So there is a video I have put here as well. Now, it's quite an interesting video, but it's just, I linked it here, just so that we get an understanding of the importance of programming and how it can be changed. The presenter in this video talks about many different things, and I am not endorsing everything he talks about. I'm really focusing on, or would like you to focus on, when he talks about programming and how to transform our programming. 